think what I want to do is, is, so I don't miss out on these, I know these people have posted some questions and they're probably similar kind of questions you guys might have and then after we get through these, um, we'll open it up because I mean I could talk to you forever, we could talk about you know, your, your sports, your, your DCI involvement, there's mm -hmm. a, a ton of ways we could go with this. but. Um, this is actually uh, from David Bailey on Facebook. This is uh, several questions, and I think a lot of these kind of dovetail into each other. So let me just read this. How many auditions did you have to take before you landed this job with the BSO? Uh, what orchestra did you perform with before landing this job? I think you've sort of answered that. What advice do you have for trumpeters starting out in the audition trail? Um, the, this audition for the BSO was my 15th audition. 15th. 15th, and uh, I had made, I had I think I, I went starting out right out of school. I took one audition while I was in school, or two auditions while I was in school. Um, and the second audition I took, I the very first audition I took was for, for principal Trump in the Houston Symphony. And, oh, no, 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 that's, I got it backwards, sorry. The very, the very first audition I ever took was for fourth utility trumpet in Atlanta, which was very interesting because it was... Uh, it was when my brother won his position in Chicago. Okay. He was he was going to Chicago to play a one year, and I was a member of the local union, even though I was a student in Chicago. I was a member of the Atlanta local, and they had uh, they had an invitation uh, an invitation only for the local union audition for Fourth Utility, and I was runner up in that audition as a sophomore in college. Oh my gosh! Wow. And, uh, and so I you know I I played very well, and uh, had I not played a wrong note two times in a row on Carmen. Um, it might have worked you, out a little so bit. So you had just but, yeah. practiced it the wrong way, or oh, I know, just I, just, I, just, I just hadn't practiced it. No, okay. Because I was I was a sophomore in college. Right, right. Why right. would you practice something that's down a half step? That's easy. Right? <laughs> uh, so uh, and Kevin Ly there. Kevin Lyons, who's a phenomenal trumpet player in, in Atlanta, right. ended up winning that position and went on to play several years with the orchestra. Uh, but, you know, so I'm a sophomore. I'm 19 years old, and I just I just made the finals and was runner up and. Uh, you know, so I walk out of the audition and I'm like, oh, this, I, this, I got this made. This, this is easy. This is, easy. This, is, <laughs> this is no problem, right? And it only took 14 more Four. times doing that to get there. So, uh, and I, I promptly went 0 for 6 in my next six auditions. Meaning uh, no, the, no, no, no advancement, no run finals. Very no. rarely even played the entire list in the first round. So, and my, I didn't take my next audition again until the end of my junior year. Um, and that was for principal Trump in the Houston Symphony. And, uh, uh, Tom Hooten uh, and Mark Hughes were kind of duking it out for both of those jobs. Right, and right. Mark ended up going to Houston, and Tom ended up going to Atlanta. And uh, I think I played a total of seven excerpts between the two auditions. Uh, so, needless to say, after that, my confidence was a little low, uh, and I, I went, you know, three or four more auditions without any any real success to show, and. Um, was a little bit perplexed, you know. So it, it seemed like the more I learned and the more I practiced, the harder this audition taking thing got. So, and then I kind of hit I hit my stride a little bit after my senior year and and it advanced to the semifinals a couple of times. And then, um, ironically enough, my first real success in an audition was in Boston, uh, where I made the finals for the uh, assistant principal trumpet position in 2008, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and made it to the last four, four or five, I think, and they ended up not hiring anyone. Um, but that that was um, an invigorating experience and a very justifying experience because I that was the first audition I, f I went into determined to not try to fit into a different kind of mold or play a way that I thought someone else would want to hear. And I, I, my goal for that audition, specifically, that was the first one I remember, my goal for that audition was going in and making myself happy with what was coming out of the bell. And, uh, so you were being yourself, absolutely. basically. Just, you yeah, just being myself. And I mean, that's a huge lesson right there. Right, and, it's, and it, the sincerity that it takes to really win an audition, to, for the, the panel, on the, the audition committee on the other side of the screen to connect with you, you know, that, that's what you want them to do. Mm -hmm. You don't want to try and manufacture someone else's greatness that they connect to. You want right. them, uh, you want them to connect right. exactly. Mm -hmm. And I've sat on audition committees now since joining the orchestra, and it's, that's exactly what I find myself listening for. I want to, I want to hear this genuine uh, emotional commitment to what they're doing. And so even though they're auditioning for one chair amongst 100 people, and they have to have a real team mentality, you still want to hear personality, right? 
Absolutely, yeah. We, I mean, uh, technique will get you through the first round, generally. Um, and, but then after that, I mean, you've got three more rounds to get through. And, uh, you know, I think our base, our base trombone audition uh, was, a, was a very good example of, I mean, we had three, we had three players in our most recent bass trombone edition. Uh, uh, Douglas EO, our, our previous bass trombonist, retired and had big shoes to fill because mm. uh, he was a tremendous player, still is a tremendous player. Um, and we got to the finals, and uh, in the finals were James Markey from the New York Philharmonic um, and George Curran, who now plays in the New York Philharmonic, um, and a player from the Marine Band. And he's gonna kill me because I'm totally blanking on his name. I'm gonna remember it in a second. But uh, but all three of them were absolutely tremendous sure. players. Yeah. And uh, uh, and it just came down to just f for us personally, we were able to on that day in that audition in that final round between those three phenomenal players, connected with Jim uh, just a little bit more than the other two guys. Mm -hmm. And the other two guys, you know, have gone on to continue to have phenomenal playing careers. Sure. So. When it comes down to that point and you're really splitting hairs, uh, it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with technique at that point. Because mm -hmm. everyone, you know, everyone that's in that position can play all the notes. They can, they've got the range and the articulation and the sound and the intonation. And it comes down to just what you connect with emotionally. That's fantastic stuff. And just the final question from, uh, from David was, how can they not be discouraged since many try out but few make it beyond the first round? So you know what that feels like. Absolutely. Uh, I think there's a, you have to have a certain willingness to accept, accept the, neg the possibility of a negative outcome. I had a lesson with John Hackstrom, who plays second trumpet in the Chicago Symphony, uh, and he, he said one of the most enlightening things uh, um, that I've heard in a while about audition taking is, is if you had to, let's say, let's say a wizard came up and, and guaranteed you the greatest job in the world for you when you're 65 years old. And he approaches you as a 25-year-old and he says, when you're 65, you're going to have the greatest job in the world for you and you're going to be world famous and everyone's going to know who you are and think you're the greatest thing ever. But for 40 years, you're going to have to live above a pizza joint and practice and take the worst gigs and work two jobs just to make ends meet. But for 40 years, you have to do that. Is that worth it to you? Can, can you make yourself do that? And would you say yes to that? And and that's it's extreme, a little bit dark, mm -hmm. but uh, but at the same it makes time, a point. It's, yeah. it makes a very good point, and it makes it crystal clear uh, the resolve it takes to get through that process. Because I I talk with our section all the time, Tom Rolfs and Ben Wright and Tom Siders, and we all talk constantly about um, you know our jobs are our jobs are tough. You know we we play all the big rep all the time, and and those parts are challenging, but but we. We all speak, especially around audition time, Tanglewood auditions, New England Conservatory auditions, that how much we never ever want to take another audition because it's, it's uh, you and I were talking about this the other day, right. the audition is such a different animal than the job. Right. And in a, way, in a way, winning an audition and getting through that, getting through that kind of a pool uh, prepares you much more for playing the actual job than playing the actual job does. Right. That makes sense. Right. And the skill set is a little different because you're working on, in your practice room, you're working on not only excerpts, but short little bits of a greater work. Mm -hmm. One, like the third trumpet part or the second trumpet part. And then when you get the job, suddenly you are part of the whole team mm -hmm. and your mindset really has to shift. Yeah, absolutely. And when you